video, I am going to address a question I get from many students. We just released a new course on modern C++, which takes you from the absolute beginning. And uh, ever since I am getting questions, should I really learn all of C++ or how far should I go in learning C++? And uh, that's what I want to address in this video to kind of help you out if you were wondering about that. You're just a beginner, you're trying to figure out how things come together to build real applications. This video is going to help you out if you happen to be having these kinds of questions. Now, the first thing I want to bring to your attention is that it is next to impossible to learn all of C++. Even the designer of the language says he doesn't really know all of C++ because to be honest, C++ is a moving target. You know, if even if you achieved the goal of learning it today, you may wake up in the next two days and see new things introduced that you have to learn about. I don't think it's a really practical goal to try and learn all of C++, but there is an amount you can learn to be safe and uh, comfortable enough to work in projects out there that use modern C++. And that's really what I am going to aim at. How can you be comfortable to work with C++ in modern times? For example, to work on games or whatever. So that's not really going to be all of C++. That's going to be a section of the C++ programming language you can aim to know to be able to do what you want to do with this programming language and really be competent out there. For example, if your goal is to get a job, if it's to work on a project that you really like, you can achieve that by learning a certain amount of C++. Okay, now that you know that you can't learn all of C++, let me share my view of the C++ programming language. When I think about C++, I really see two sides. I see user-facing C++ code and I see C++ library code. And let me explain a little bit. The majority of us C++ developers are really not aspiring to write libraries that are going to be used by other C++ application. What most people are going to want is to write usable applications with C++. For example, you want to write a text processing application, you want to write a game, you want to write a graphical user interface or whatever. This is what most people want. And this is going to be part of the user facing side of C++ code out there. The library side of C++ code tends to be really confusing. In most cases, it's going to be using templates and generic programming because they really have to design for a wide range of use cases. They have to think about many things as they are writing the library. So they need to do a lot of thinking. They need to put in a lot of abstractions to allow people later to customize the library to make it do whatever it is they want to do. That's why C++ library code uses things like generic programming, function templates, class templates, and all kinds of crazy things that drive people mad. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let's try and look at a few examples. For example, if you crack open CPP reference here, any page is going to do, I am just going to go to the algorithms page and let's go down and try to open a single algorithm and let's do ranges find here. And many people looking at this, they're going to go mad instantly. They're going to see template, angle brackets. This is really going to be confusing and hard to understand. And I think this is the first reason many people don't decide to learn C++ because they think it's complicated, they think it's hard to understand. And uh, this video is meant to not discourage you. It's meant to tell you that it is possible. Let's be honest. Most C++ code out there for real applications that people use is rarely going to be using templates like this. You're going to see templates used a lot in the library code. Again, the reason is that library code needs to take into many use cases. For example, you have a library sitting on top. There's another library that is going to build on top of that. And that's going to be another library here. And you kind of going to have a tree of dependencies between libraries. And all these libraries are going to have their own use cases. That's why for example, the designer of the library sitting on top here has to think generically. They have to provide blueprints other people could use to do more practical things. But if you are writing a leaf application, for example, sitting right here, you don't need 
to think too much in terms of blueprint or things that other people are going to be using. You're going to be writing your leaf application and uh, you are rarely going to be using templates like this. So if you are one of the people thinking, I don't want to use templates, I think they are confusing and really bad, don't worry, you don't really have to use templates in your practical C++ applications. So to really drive this home, let's go to Google and say C++. We're going to go to GitHub and look at some trending C++ repositories and really look at the code to kind of drive the point home. We can crack open the terminal application from Microsoft here. Another library I have used in the past, maybe eight or seven years ago, is Tesseract here for character recognition. We're going to crack open these things. And let's go to Tesseract and go in the source folder. And uh, let's see what we can look at. We can crack open the classify folder here. And hopefully the code is big enough for you to see on screen. So if we go in and try to open something here, let's crack open the classify header here in the classify folder. And uh, you're going to see that there's not going to be a lot of template code here. We're creating some classes. We are doing some includes here. And if we go down, you're going to see that this is really approachable C++ code which is not very different from code you see in Java, Python, or whatever. But let's be honest, C++ is very powerful. It compiles to code that runs directly on the hardware. So by writing your project in C++, you're going to be taking advantage of all these cool things. But the code doesn't really have to be confusing or whatever. You can write really understandable code which doesn't use a lot of templates, and that's going to be really cool. Now, some of you are going to say, what is this angle bracket here? Why are we using this? Well, this is just going to be you being a user of template code, and uh, this is just going to instantiate the template to give you a class that you can use directly in your code. This is not going to be you designing templates that are going to be used by others. This is going to be you using templates designed by others or even by you if you want to go down that path. So this is really what I wanted to drive home. I don't want this video to be super long. There are two sides to working with C++. You can either write user facing applications. And if you decide to go down this path, you're going to be writing relatively understandable code, which doesn't use templates and generic programming a lot. But it is possible to also go the path of writing libraries. If you decide to go this path, you're probably going to be needing a lot of generic programming and templates. Let's go back and really show you one of the classes from the C++ standard library. We can do something like this. Let's say std vector and do GitHub. We're going to see the implementation for this. And if we do a search in Google, we're going to find one from the GCC implementation. And if we open that, we're going to see that this is going to be not very understandable. Again, the C++ standard library is not popular for being understandable or whatever. There is a lot of interaction in what they do. I personally don't like their way of doing things, but it is what we have to work with. So if you decide to write libraries, you're going to be using a lot of templates and your code is going to look more or less something like this. But again, the message I was trying to drive home here is that 70% or 80% of C++ code out there is really not going to be this. A lot of developers are not going to be writing libraries. They're going to be writing leaf user-facing applications. And it is not very common to use a lot of generic programming or template programming in code bases like that. Okay, so this is really what I wanted to drive home in this video. Please let me know what you think. Do you think C++ is approachable? If it's not approachable, please share your ideas. I really want to know what you guys are thinking. And if you happen to be in need of learning C++ from the absolute beginning, we have a mega course on modern C++ using C++20. And you are going to learn a lot from this course. We have chapters on C++20. We have everything from the absolute beginning all the way to a point where you can use really advanced things. We even have chapters on function templates, class templates, inheritance, polymorphism. You're going to be learning a lot about modern C++. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. Again, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, please share in the description below. I am going to stop here in this video and I will see you next time.